Good morning. Welcome. It's not snowing out yet, is it? Okay. I've been in here all morning. Uh, please make sure any electronic devices are silenced. And uh, Father John will be our celebrant. celebrant. Please rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace of God our Father, and his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. We come together at the table of God's word and the altar of Jesus' sacrifice to hear him teach with authority the message by which we find the fullness of life. We experience the spiritual healing he gladly imparts to all who come before him. Let us open our hearts now to the presence of God. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you give life to your people. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to eternal happiness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. In Christ, your Son, O God, you impart to us a new teaching from one who speaks with authority. For Jesus is the unique master of wisdom and our only liberator from the forces of evil. Make us convinced and courageous in professing our faith so that by word and deed we may proclaim the truth and bear witness to the happiness enjoyed by those who center their lives and put all their trust in you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord.
it when your parents put me to the test. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. If today A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not like the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. And all were amazed. And they asked one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. 
His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. What have you to do with us? Have you come to destroy us? The words that the, the man with the spirit cried out in the synagogue. What have you to do with us, Jesus? Have you come to destroy us? And Jesus says, yes. He says, yes. I have come to destroy the unclean spirits. I have come to destroy that which holds you bound. Who is the person with the unclean spirit? I think if we are honest, it's every single one of us. We are all here with unclean spirits because we are all here with our own personal demons, fear, worry, prejudice. Oh, there are so many. We could go down a whole big long list of the things that keep us sort of bound. Because it's very difficult, I think, for any one of us to let go. To let go. And when you stand before the Holy One of God, when you stand before Jesus Christ, who is God made flesh, who is God's love incarnate, you get a little uncomfortable. When you listen to the teachings of Jesus, the teaching of unconditional love, and you stop and honestly examine yourself, you see how far short we all fall. That's why the man cried out, and that's why I think all of us in some way cry out the same. What do you have to do to us, Jesus? What do you want of us? He says, I want you to love unconditionally. But then we say, well, how can I? I'm too afraid. I'm too worried about what's going on. I'm too concerned that the wrong people are being taken over our lives. I'm too afraid. We get all of these fears and worries. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of your love, oh God. How many times do we say that? Or we say, I'm such a great sinner. How can God ever forgive me? And yet, the message of Jesus, which he speaks with authority, is saying to you and to me, be true to yourself, be holy. Holy, he only loves you. Realize how much you are loved. And when you truly accept that, when you truly accept how loved you are, then everything else is going to be destroyed, as it were. Anything that's blocking that love will fall by the wayside. It's not easy. It's not easy. The world would tell us that, oh, it's our right to be all caught up in all of these different things. No. Jesus wants us to let go, 
to let God rule our lives, to have peace in our hearts, and most of all, he wants us to learn the simple message of unconditional love. And we can only begin to learn that message and to live that message when we first learn to love ourselves. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Today's psalm reminds us that our God cares for us as a shepherd watches over his flock. Confident in his everlasting kindness, let us bring our needs before him. May all who proclaim and teach the word of God in truth and humility preach the gospel and draw others to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Lord our God raise up prophets in every land and put in their mouths the challenging words of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May teachers and staff in Catholic schools see each of their students as child of God and be blessed in their efforts to form each one into a person who will live out the values of our shared faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all of us gathered here be freed from all anxieties and distractions that keep us from living joyfully in God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May Elsie Cunningham, Victoria Gazior, Ioli Kolar, Eloise Orford, William Stiles, and all those called by God to eternal life be led into the presence of the Holy One of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God grant these needs which we hold in our hearts. For these needs, and for Richard D. McKillop, Frank Malika, Raymond Thompson, Lucy Califati, Eileen Scaliti, Gregory Van Cardo, Andrew R. Zarnowski, and all the people of the parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you sent your Son to walk among us and to teach us with authority about your way of love. Hear our prayers that we might heed his voice and be fashioned into a people after your own heart. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs>
Let us now pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our self-service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you. Lift up your heart. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father of mercies, faithful God, you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children, for the poor, for the sick, for the sinner. He became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the choirs of angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as we join in their unending hymn of praise. O God, who loved the human race, who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth the power of your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine. Let them become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of his last supper, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, handed the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. 
and grant that through the power of your spirit of love, we may be included now and into the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And let your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, so that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and to all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Grant also to us that we might come to an everlasting dwelling place and live forever with you, with Mary, your mother, with Joseph, her husband, with all the apostles and saints in your presence. Then freed from every shadow of sin and death, we shall take our place in the new creation and give you thanks with Christ, our risen Lord. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Taught by the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your people, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with each one of you. Amen. Thank you. Now let us share that peace. Be 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
For those of you at home who are unable to physically receive the body and blood of Christ in Eucharist, I invite you to make an act of spiritual communion, asking Christ, the one who teaches with authority the way of love, to let his love so fill you that you'll be able to say, as Paul once said, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Lord Jesus, you have given us your real presence in both word and Eucharist. At this time, I'm not able to receive you sacramentally in the Eucharist, but I can receive you in my heart spiritually. Come to me, Lord. Fill me with your presence. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, transform me. Water flowing from the side of Christ, wash over me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Hide me within your wounds. Never let me be separated from you. Defend me from all evil. Make me an instrument of your love, your peace, and your joy to everyone I meet. O oh, my Savior, my only hope, I place all my trust in you. I believe in you. I hope in you. I love you. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, our faith may ever be increased through Christ our Lord. We have the following announcements for the week. Next weekend, Super Bowl weekend, team up with St. Rose of Lima Church and the Freehold Knights of Columbus to help fight hunger and poverty in our community by bringing canned food with you to Mass. See today's bulletin for more information. Ministers are needed for the Ash Wednesday services. Please fill out the form in today's bulletin and return it to the parish office. Baskets have been placed at the main entrance of the church and chapel to collect old palms to burn for use as ashes on Ash Wednesday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As disciples eager to share with all the blessedness of God's kingdom, let us go now in peace to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Have a wonderful week. Thank you.